short answer, select a peg, this new button in the advanced animation tools, press the capture button, draw a squiggle all around, and press play. Instant, natural hand movements. Look at you go, well done. Long answer, good hello, welcome. To Onion Skin, Motion Capture Tools, a brand new feature to Harmony 21 and something I am thrilled exists. At last, a very, very easy way to get proper natural hand movements into our animations, particularly into our motion tweens. Have you ever tried to do something that looks like a natural movement before, especially with tweens interpolation in that? There's ways to do it. You could try using a quake or even a shake, but just trying to eyeball it with your drawings or especially with a peg, trying to manually place keyframes around, hoping that it will sort of move. It always looks overly clinical. It's too, it's boring. It's not the way things move in real life. When working with interpolation, we have to go back and deliberately put imperfections back in. If only we could record our actual stupid, meaty little imperfect hands around. So take this scene, popsicle stick puppets, and all of the movement is simply done for real. Oh, look at this happy little guy. What's he so shocked about? So to emphasize again, trying to make a natural hand movement of a popsicle stick, like I'm actually holding it, moving it around with natural peg movements would look something like this, where I would select the peg, go to the first frame, add a keyframe, and either with the regular transform tool or I prefer the actual position tool because then I can click anywhere around the screen to move them about. I guess it's start them at the bottom of the screen, come up to frame nine or so, up he comes. And then every few frames, I'll sort of just jostle them around a little bit like this. And it's relatively fiddly going through each frame one at a time. And then I highlight them all, press Control K to create the interpolation. So they all connect together and I get this. Do you see what I mean? This is the clinical look and movement I'm talking about. But no, no, it just doesn't work. To pull it off is incredibly tedious. So let's just do it in one fell step, yes? For blank keyframes, I don't need to do anything, just have the peg itself selected. And along the top, animation tools. Remember, if they're not here, right click and go advanced animation to add them. There is a new one at the very end. It's got a little recording symbol on it, capture motion. If you select it, we then go over to the tool properties. It's got a couple of different settings, capture speed, 100%, keyframe interval one. So if you've set this to two, then it would actually capture your movement in twos, which can be pretty useful for a lot of scenarios. And the smoothing slider here will start to take away the imperfections of your natural hand to start to tie it all together to start to smooth it all out, to bring it back to that place of sort of clinical movement, but hey, it's still much faster because you're doing it live, you're real puppeteering, right? So we press the capture button and we get a recording 0000. zero, zero, zero. Then all we gotta do is draw. This line that we make will capture not just where we go around the screen, but also the speed. So if I sort of do a small drift around like this, and then if my hand suddenly juts out of the side really fast, but then I come back slowly, you'll notice that when I let go, the timer disappears. The timeline is filled up with tons and tons and tons of keyframes. And if I press play, we will see it captured. Moving around and it will dart across to the side really fast and it will drift back slowly. Look at that. And just like everything else within Harmony, you would have noticed there that the drawing substitutions are kept separate from any interpolated or tweened movement. So down here is where the drawing substitutions will change from one to the flip, the other side and hold. So that way I can shuffle these drawings around and have them switch from state to state anywhere I want along my movement. Really is as simple as that. Here's another example of Wade one a natural hand movement someone holding a phone, right? A sort of selfie style. Great way to add a little bit of extra life if you are doing a scene that is just holding on a single character's face for a prolonged period of time. So this scene's drawn across three layers, the camera interface, the person themselves, and the brick wall behind them. Uh, these two here is just to create uh, that sort of black outline around the interface so you can still actually see it. So to set this one up properly, all three will need a peg with, sh con with control shift P. I'm going to need a camera node for this one. That's what we're actually going to be using to animate the scene around, which is going to share its parent with the camera interface so that when I move that around, the camera always stays still in the middle of the scene, person moves around behind them. Uh, and from here, all I have to do is take this background layer and move it physically into the distance so that we get a bit of a 
a parallax effect like that. Uh, but remember, there is the secret resizing tool also along the animation tools uh, this with these two boxes here which will scale things into the background but also increase their size at the same time so as that brick wall goes all the way back uh, it's going to get bigger so from here it creates the illusion it looks the same size but it is further back there so this parallax effect is going to be quite strong now look at that Cool, so let's make that look a little bit more natural. All we have to do is take this first peg and same thing as before. Press Capture Motion, Tool Properties, Capture. And this will be just a very gentle, I might even zoom in for this, just sort of drift my mouse around like that. He's holding it. Four seconds, five seconds. Moving barely at all for some of it. There we go. 10 seconds of movement. Captured in real time. Let's see how it looks. Hey, not too shabby, right? The key is to be subtle, of course. Because this is a character who is trying to hold their hand still. But we can't really do that. Really. Yeah. I'll show you how to break it just a little bit more. So you can start pushing this feature into even more territory. This one I'm just going to call Movement Z. I'm going to capture motion again, but this one I'm only ever going to drift my mouse a little bit to the left and right, like that. I might push it all the way across a little bit, and then back again. That's going to look a little strange at first, because now there's just going to be lots of left and right movement. Ah, but what we're actually going to do here is open up Movement Z's parameters with the plus symbol. Down in the very bottom left, there's three little buttons. Press the one in the middle to expand the values. Now I was moving left and right mostly, which is position X. So I'm gonna take all of these keyframes here, cut those and paste them onto position Z, which is forwards and backwards. So that same gesture I just did. Now we've got a little bit of depth in there as well. So you see, it pulls it back a bit, brings it forwards a little bit. I need to be careful though, because there's a couple of occasions here where this clipping happens. This is actually the character physically coming too far forwards. They are in front of the camera lens. That's okay. I override it with a third peg. We're on frame one. I use that maintain size tool again to just pull the interface really far forward so there's no way it'll ever cross over. So there we go. Natural hand movement, moving around and moving backwards and forwards. There we go, I'm starting to get carried away. There's a lot more tricks I wanna show off, so please let me know if you wanna see more with the motion capture tool, especially now that we've just started to break it a little bit, yeah? It's trying to take its values and apply it to other things. I've got, I'm working on a couple of gadgets at the moment where you could try and use this to apply it to transparency or blurs and things like that. But it may only be worth my time if there's like a demand for it, so please let me know if that sounds interesting to you. Meanwhile, these two working files of the selfie guy and the whole theater stick scene available to Patreons as always. So you can go grab those files, have a dig around. Please join the Onyskin Discord server so you can show off any of the experiments you make with the rest of our little community. Have some fun with this one. Bye.